items from handmade bits and spurs, and buckles, leather goods, saddles and tack, ropes, and assortment of knives. We also provide an assortment of home goods through G3 Cattle Company. We are stocked with fresh cuts of beef, pork, and chicken, along with jams and preserves, baking goods, Bowman's milk, coffee, and other general merchandise. If you're in need of a trim, we also offer a walk-in barber service. We're open from 1 to 5.30 Tuesday to Thursday and 9 to 5.30 on Fridays. Come visit us at the shop, Albany's headquarters for homemade goods. All right, we're back here at the top of the second. Thanks for joining in. Lions find themselves down 1-0 here early in this contest. Chambers doing the pitching early this afternoon for the Lions. Oliver behind the plate. And this is going to be number 14, Saginaw, the left fielder for the Indians. The Indians got off to 1-0 lead on one hit in the air. Left one on base in the first inning. First pitch is going to be a strike. Chambers is going to work ahead 0-1. Chambers did a good job in that first inning of working ahead in the count. I uh, was able to get two strikeouts early in that inning. 14 is going to spool this one to third base with Chapman. Chapman's going to come up firing over to Wagner. And that's going to be a ground out. One out here in the bottom of the, or top of the second. And that's going to bring up the second baseman, number 11, Enriquez. Second baseman, Enriquez. Again, the Indians were able to get one hit there in the first, one run. Left one on base. That first pitch is going to be a strike. Make the count 0 1. Here to second baseman. That ball is going to be in the dirt. Lions playing at normal depth right here. Infield of Wagner, Reed, Fairchild, and Chapman, all seniors across the first, second base, third base, and shortstop this afternoon. That pitch is going to be outside. It's going to make the count two and one. The sophomores are men in the outfield. Peterson, Fairchild, and McCloy. And then you're, again this afternoon, Junior Chambers is pitching and sophomore Oliver behind the plate. It's going to take the count to three and one. Three and one pitch. It's going to be in the dirt. And Enriquez is going to draw a walk. So with one out, that's going to put Enriquez on first base. And that's going to bring up the DH today, number two wing. And Chambers is going to get ahead here, 0 and 1. Enriquez over at first, not getting much of a lead with the left handed Chambers on the mound. That pitch is going to be high, 1 and 1. That one's going to be swung on a miss, and that's going to make the count one and two. Again, Enriquez over at first base, getting a short lead over there. Chambers with the pitch, one and two, one out. That's going to be high and outside. It's going to make the count two and two. Pitch two and two, that's going to swung on and missed. And a strikeout for Chambers, his third of the afternoon. And that's going to bring up number 15, the first baseman, Alsebrook. Two outs here in the top of the second. Pitch on to foul off, 0-1. Enriquez, again, not getting much of a lead over there at first. Here's your pitch, 0-1, two outs. Swung and missed, 
trying to get a I think Wang must be pinch hitting for Pinkerton in the right field. Figure that out here Sure, That's swing and a miss, and that's going to be strike three. Four strike out of the afternoon for Chambers, and that's going to end the top of the second. No runs, no hits, one walk, one left on base. We'll go to the bottom of the second. We'll be back after this message. You're listening to Albany Line Baseball. Where a handshake is our word, cattle are money, and timing is everything. Western Livestock is a family-owned and operated livestock auction and order buying company with more than 30 years of experience. You trust us with your livelihood each week. The buying power in our seats ensures top dollar for your livestock to allow you to keep doing what you love. With sell barns in Oklahoma City, Comanche, and Woodward, Oklahoma, and Knoxville, Iowa, we're large enough to serve you, but small enough to know you. To learn more, call Ben Hale at 940-631-2333 or visit westerncommissioncompany.com. Hi, right, we're back here in the bottom of the second. And uh, with this break, we wanted to have to give a shout out to the boys golf team. Uh, finishing up round two this morning over in Ferris, Texas at the uh, old Brickyard Golf Club. And the Albany Lions came away with a team finish of third place <clears throat> in a tight, tight finish. Uh, and going to go through those scores real quick. Uh, Luke Wheeler, he shot a two-day total of 156, led off the first day with a 75 and a day two, 81. Huffman Heatley, uh, shot a 157 two-day total, 75 day one, 82 day two. Houston Heatley, older brother, shot a 157 two-day total, 82 on day one, and come back with a, a nice 75 this afternoon. Uh, Luke Marshall had a 163 two-day total. He shot 81 on day one and 82 on day two. And then Aiden Blue uh, shot a two-day uh, round total of 180, uh, 97 on day one, and then um, an 83 today. So. Uh, great, great outing right there for the Albany Lions, and they're going back to Austin in a couple of weeks to uh, their second home course, maybe third home course, and uh, look forward to seeing what they can do. And um, So, again, great job for the Albany Lions golf team, and very proud of those guys, and um, wish them the best of luck, and we'll have some sort of a little, um, little highlight reel at some point in our future broadcast. So again, congratulations to the Albany Lions. Brody Oliver is leading this inning off with the Albany Lions. Bottom of the second, catcher. He's down 0-2 here. Now he's gonna sing, hit one over to the third baseman row. He's gonna come up with it. And a delayed call by the first base umpire, but they're gonna say he's out. So Oliver's going to ground out to the third baseman, and that's going to bring have one out here in the top or bottom of the second. It's going to bring up Chambers, the pitcher. And uh, I think I just learned that our golf team may be having a hard time making it back. They got stuck in some traffic on the way home. So a shout out again to those guys. Uh, Chambers is going to, oh, that's going to be picked up by Rowe. I thought he found a hole over there. Rowe made a nice play, mass throw over, and another ground out to the third baseman. Two outs here quickly in the bottom of the second. And uh, you're listening. Today's missing Tony Wheeler. He's battling some traffic on I-20 and uh, putting all the pressure on me this afternoon. So I know he's, he's feeling a little less stressed driving home today. I think he had a little bit more maybe about four or five hours ago. Than I have now. I think I've reversed roles. So um, again, congratulations to those guys as they're making their way back home this afternoon from Ferris, Texas. That brings up the left fielder Peterson. Two outs here in the bottom of the second. Head two and zero. Oh. Pitch, being high and inside. It's going to take the count to 3-0. and oh. And Woods is just going to watch that one go by. It's going to be a 3-1 and one count. 
But I'm, I'm going to say Coach Fairchild put the brakes on on that one. Watch that pitch. Try to draw an early walk here in the bottom of the second. That pitch is going to be outside. And Woods is going to reach with a walk right there. Good to bat right there by Peterson. Try to get something going here with two outs in the bottom of the second. And that's going to bring in the right fielder, number zero, McCloy. Boy stands in. Peterson over at first base. Woods has got some good speed over there. Mason's kind of showing a little bit of a bunt sign right there almost maybe, but maybe just trying to get a quick ball right there. They're going to get a strike right here. He's going to be down 0-1. Woods gets his lead. 0-1 pitch with two outs. They're going to throw over. That's going to get away from the first baseman, but Woods had to dive in, so he's going to have to stay put at first base. Woods again gets his lead from first base. On one pitch, that's going to be high on inside. It's going to take it to one and one. One and one count here to McCoy with two outs. Peterson over at first base. That pitch is going to be a called strike. It's, it's going to take the count to one and two. Both Mason and Woods run really well, so see if Mason can put one on the ground and beat out a throw, put some pressure on the Indians infield right here. He's going to swing, and that's going to be a pop fly to the first baseman. It's out of play, but he's going to make the catch. And that's going to end the inning here in the second. So no runs, no hits, had a walk, one left on base for the lines. We're headed to the top of the third after this message. You're listening to Albany Line Baseball. We're the bank you've always known and trusted, a part of your community for generations. And now, First National Bank of Albany Breckenridge is Clear Fork Bank. We're still privately owned and independent. You'll find the same dedicated team, the same friendly faces, and the same strong relationships with our customers. Our offerings have expanded to better serve you but our commitment to local banking is steadfast. Clear Fork Bank, serving Texans since 1883. Located on Highway 283 South, Easy Feed and Supply is your hometown headquarters for complete animal nutrition. We carry lawn and garden, hunting and fishing supplies, along with wildlife and pet feed. Let us load you up in our drive through warehouse. Need something delivered? We can come to you with our blower buggy to fill your corn and protein feeders, along with delivery of sack feed and round or square bales of hay. Not only does Easy Feed have all your farming and ranching supplies, it's now the proud home of Parsons Beef, where you can get your prime Wagyu and Angus beef straight from our Texas ranches. Easy Feed and Supply, proudly serving Albany since 2011. All right, we're back here in the top of the third. Chambers back on to work his third inning here. He's given up one hit. He's got four strikeouts and one walk, one run. First pitch by Brindle. He's going to hit that one to the right field, McCloy. And that's going to be a quick out here for Chambers in the top of the third. And that's going to bring up number four, the center fielder, De La Cruz. He's 0 for 1 on the afternoon. Again, lines trailing 1-0 here in the top of the third, one out. Pitch, swing and a miss, 0-1. Chambers has done a good job this afternoon of working ahead of a, most of these hitters. He's fa facing his 11th batter this afternoon, and I feel like he's been about ahead of about eight or nine of these guys. That one's going to be a ball inside, 1-1. One one. Chambers pounding that strike zone. And that's going to just come up just a little bit low. It's going to make the count two and one. 
Two and one to De La Cruz. One out here in the top of the third. Swing and a miss. Strike twos. Two and two count, one out. Here's a pitch, swing and a miss. And that's gonna be the fifth strikeout of the afternoon for Chambers. And that's gonna bring up number 24, the pitcher West. West with the one hit for the Indians this afternoon. He had a double back in the first. And he's going to come out swinging hard right there. It's going to be a miss right here. It's going to be 0-1. West doubled in the first inning with two outs to center field. And then pinch runner came in and was able to come across the plate for the lone run of this game this afternoon. That's going to be fouled back. It's going to catch the front grill of the GMC truck back there, and it's going to make the count 0-2. Chambers. What the pitch? It's behind outside, trying to get him to fish at one right there, one and two. One and two count, two outs. Chambers with the pitch. Working that outside corner and just going to be a hair outside. Going to take the count to two and two. Really nice location for Chambers right there. It's just off the plate. He gets West to swing at that one, and that's going to be fouled back out of play. Might have found the goat farm out there. That ball was hit a long ways, and that way, the way that wind's blowing, it just kept carrying. They have lost that baseball. Two and two count. West, two outs. Here in the top of the third. And that one's going to be just low. I think it cut the plate, but just a little bit low, and that's going to make the count full, three and two here with two outs to West. That pitch is going to be outside. And West is going to be on for the second time this afternoon. This time via a walk. Let's see if we got a courtesy runner for him. Looks like the Indians are going to Bring someone in to run for West over there at first base. It's going to be number 12. And number 12 is Strick, uh, Alexander for the Indians. So the pinch run, the courtesy run over there for West is going to be Alexander, number 12. And that's going to bring up the third baseman, Rowe. Rowe is going to swing, and he's going to hit that one to center field. And Fairchild's going to settle under it. And that's going to finish off this inning. So the Indians, no runs, no hits, one walk, one left on base. We'll go to the bottom of the third. You're listening to Albany Line Baseball. Serving the big country, Resource Care Community Health Center strives to be the leading health care resource in each community we serve. Our mission is to provide exceptional health care and outreach services to the communities we serve in the big country area through medical, dental, and behavioral health access for all. With locations at Albany, Clyde, Breckenridge, Merkel, Cross Plains, and our newest location opening in the spring of 2024 in Baird, we are committed to providing exceptional services to the big country. We accept almost all private insurances, as well as Medicaid, Medicare, and a sliding fee scale discount.
All right, we're back here in the bottom of the third, and it's going to bring up the top of the order for the Lions. Lions thus far have one hit, no runs, three left on base. It's going to bring in the shortstop Fairchild, Kaysen Fairchild. He's 0 for 1 on the afternoon. And we're underway here in the bottom of the third. That's going to be a ball high. 1 0 the count here to Fairchild. Pitch here. That's going to be in the dirt. Take the count to 2 0. Good crowd on hand this afternoon for senior night. And that pitch is going to be a called strike to Fairchild. Going to take it to two and one. Two and one pitch. That's going to be outside. It's going to take it to three and one. Again, three and one count here for the leadoff here for the Lions here in the bottom of the third. As they trail 1 0. There's a pitch, and that's going to be high and inside. And Fairchild's going to draw a walk to lead off the inning. So Fairchild doing a good job. We get our leadoff man on. And that's going to bring up the third baseman, Tyler Chapman. Fairchild, quite a bit of speed over there at first base. Probably going to see pitcher try to hold him on right here. Chapman digs in. Fairchild gets his lead. There's a pitch and swung on, and that's going to be popped up. Looks like it's going to go to the right fielder. Pinkerton, he's going to make the catch. And that's going to be a one pitch out there for Chapman. And it's going to bring up 17. The second baseman, Cole Reed. Reed, one for one on the afternoon. He singled back in the top of the or bottom of the first. Was able to move him all the way over to third. So Reed coming up, Fairchild over at first, gets a lead. He's taking off. So breaking ball outside. There's a throw down to second. Fairchild's going to be in there, and he's going to be safe. So. A good pitch to run on there is a more of a breaking ball, off-speed pitch right there from West, and Fairchild was able to get a good jump and slide in safely. So Reed's got a runner in scoring position. One-zero -oh count. Reed calls for time. He's got a little dirt in his eye right there. Digs back in. One-zero -oh count. One out. Fairchild getting his lead off second. Second baseman, guy dancing behind him. Reed's going to pop this one up. It's going to go to the left field. So that ball's still kind of drifting, and it's going to be off the glove, and it's going to fall in. And Fairchild's going to move over to third. Had to hold up right there. And Reed's going to be standing on first right there. And the wind is just really, the way it's moving from right to left, that ball just stayed up in the air a lot longer than think he expected it to and it just kept moving the ball the ball just kept moving and it's a tough play right there for the outfielder and that's going to bring up Wagner runners on the corner Wagner drew a walk back in the first there's your pitch break the ball outside again very similar to the first bat we saw from Wagner very few fastballs they're going to start him with a off-speed pitch outside There's your pitch and another off-speed pitch, and that's going to be high. Reed's going to take second base. Wagner, uh, obviously known for his power, and I don't know that he's going to see a, very many fastballs this afternoon. Runners at second and third. 2-0 count to Wagner. 
And that's going to find a hole between shortstop and third. That's going to bring in Fairchild. Reed's going to round third. He's going to be sent home. Wagner's going to dig for second. He's going to be in at second with a double. Not only a great piece of hitting right there by Wagner, but he did a great job rounding first right there. Got himself in a scoring position, so it's going to drive across two runs right there, give the Lions their first lead of the afternoon. And it looks like we're going to have a mound visit right here. We're going to take a brief moment on the Indians' visit. All right, we're back here. Callan Fairchild, the center fielder, is going to step in with Wagner over at second. One out here in the bottom of the third. The Lions lead two to one. First pitch, Callan's going to send that one to a very similar spot that Wagner, or uh, actually Reed hit it. Left fielder is going to catch this one and throw it in, and that's going to be an out number two on the, for the this third inning, and it's going to bring up the catcher Oliver. Waller or Oliver, 0 for one on the afternoon. So he grounded out to the third baseman back in the second. Wagner still over at second, two outs. First pitch is going to be a strike. On one count. Like a off speed pitch right there to Oliver. Swing and a miss, going to make it 0 and 2. One, two count, two outs. Runner on second. And that one's going to be high. It's going to take it to one and two. Oliver digs in. Here's your pitch. That one's going to find a hole between first and second. The second baseman was over there trying to keep Wagner close. And that created a big gap for Oliver. And Oliver, with a great piece of hitting, was able to stick one right in that gap for a single and an RBI for Oliver. So that's going to bring up the pitcher, number 12, Chambers. 0 for 1 on the afternoon. Two outs here with Oliver over at first. And looks like we're going to have a courtesy runner for the Lions. Looks like it's going to be number 25, Bill. He's going to come in and run for Oliver. So Bill comes in to run for Oliver. Chambers steps in. First pitch, it's going to get away, and Bill's going to take second. All right, so one and no count here for Chambers. Just Bill's now in scoring position. Two outs here in the bottom of the third. Lines leading three to one. Chambers batting from the left side. There's the pitch. And that's going to catch the outside corner. One and one. One on one count, two outs, Bill on second. Pitch to Chambers. Gonna be a off speed, and that's gonna be high. It's gonna make it two and one to Chambers.
Two and one count. There's your pitch. And that's going to be low and inside. It's going to be three and one to Chambers. Here in the bottom of the third with two outs, Bill gets his lead from second. Chambers is going to spoil that one found on the third baseline out of play. So we're going to have a full count here with two outs. Bill gets his lead from second. West shaking off the sign. There's the pitch. Swing and a miss. And that's going to be it for the third. Lions are able to score three runs on two hits, one walk, one air, one left on base. We'll be back with more Albany Line baseball after this short message. Where a handshake is our word, cattle are money, and timing is everything. Western Livestock is a family-owned and operated livestock auction and order buying company with more than 30 years of experience. You trust us with your livelihood each week. The buying power in our seats ensures top dollar for your livestock to allow you to keep doing what you love. With sell barns in Oklahoma City, Comanche, and Woodward, Oklahoma, and Knoxville, Iowa, we're large enough to serve you, but small enough to know you. To learn more, call Ben Ham at 940-631-2333 or visit westerncommissioncompany.com. We're the bank you've always known and trusted, a part of your community for generations. And now, First National Bank of Albany Breckenridge is Clear Fork Bank. We're still privately owned and independent. You'll find the same dedicated team, the same friendly faces, and the same strong relationships with our customers. Our offerings have expanded to better serve you, but our commitment to local banking is steadfast. Clear Fork Bank, serving Texans since All right, we're back here in the top of the fourth. I believe that's 21. Solano is going to lead off this inning for the Indians. First pitch, swinging. He's going to fly that one to right field. McCloy and Fairchild making a play. McCloy's going to have it. And a quick out here in the fourth inning. Good play right there by McCloy. Again, that way that wind's blowing, it's making it real tough on these outfielders. Kind of a crosswind. And that ball just continues to move. That one kept diving. Great play over there by Mason. Chambers done a great job on the mound today. He's given up one run, only one hit, five strikeouts, one walk. 14's left fielder there. He's going to pop this one up to the left fielder, and uh, Peterson makes a great play on that one, and he's going to second two pitches, two outs here in the top of the fourth. And that's going to bring up the second baseman, Enriquez. He drew a walk back in the second. So Chambers working quickly in this inning. Two pitches, two flyouts. First pitch is going to be high. It's going to be ball one. Again, Chambers has only given up the one hit this afternoon. Back in the first inning. That pitch is going to be low. 2-0 to the count. Don't have a pitch count on Chambers, but the way he's worked in, through this game, I don't imagine it's very high. 3 0 count here, and Enriquez. Again, he's drew a walk back in the top of the second. Three 0 delivery, and that's going to be his called strike, 3 and 1. Three and one count. That's going to be just outside. And then Riquez is going to draw his second walk of the afternoon. And that's going to bring up the DH, number two wing. <laughs> so 
So Enriquez draws a walk. Two outs here. First pitch is going to be called a ball. So Enriquez gets his lead. Two outs, one and no count. There's your pitch. Swung on, fouled back. Find the catcher. One and one count. Pitch from Chambers, one and one. That's going to be in there for a strike. So a great pitch right there. That ball moved quite a bit across that plate. Started outside, worked its way back in. One and two count here for Chambers. And that's another great pitch right there by Chambers. This six strikeout of the afternoon. And so no runs, no hits. One left on base for the Indians. Lions lead three to wars. You're listening to Albany Line Baseball. Located on Highway 283 South, Easy Feed and Supply is your hometown headquarters for complete animal nutrition. We carry lawn and garden, hunting and fishing supplies, along with wildlife and pet feed. Let us load you up in our drive through warehouse. Need something delivered? We can come to you with our blower buggy to fill your corn and protein feeders, along with delivery of sack feed and round or square bales of hay. Not only does Easy Feed have all your farming and ranching supplies, it's now the proud home of Parsons Beef, where you can get your prime Wagyu and Angus beef straight from our Texas ranches. Easy Feed and Supply, proudly serving Albany since 2011. All right, we're back here in the bottom of the fourth. Peterson's going to get us started here for the lines. Peterson drew a walk back in the second. First pitch swinging, and that ball is going to get. Oh, look at that. That was a nice catch right there. I think he just picked that one right up off the ground. I thought Peterson was going to have a good start. Nice little single right there, but the left fielder was able to go down and. Pick that one off the ground. So one pitch out here to get us started here in the fourth. That's going to bring up the right fielder, McCloy. McCloy 0 for 1 on the afternoon. Pitch, McCloy's going to show bun. He's going to bunt it right back to the pitcher. Pitcher fills it, throws over to first, and that's going to be out number two. Good idea right there by Mason. Good play by the pitcher. I mean, two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. It's going to bring up the top of the lineup for the Lions. That's going to bring up number one, Jason Fairchild, the shortstop. Fairchild, 0 for 1 on the afternoon. He did walk back in the third, come around to score the first line, uh, run for the Lions. First pitch, Fairchild swinging. And second baseman, shortstop, both kind of looking at each other. Shortstop's going to come up, come up with the catch right there. And a relatively quick inning right there. And uh, no runs, no hits, no errors, no, no one left on base for the lines. We'll be back with the top of the fifth. You're listening to Albany Line Baseball. Whether it's sculptures, metal fences, metal art, or entry gates, Joe Barrington has you covered. His images are drawn from a lifetime of living in rural Texas. With projects located in areas such as the Rawls College of Business Administration at Texas Tech, the Rio Grande Zoo in Albuquerque, New Mexico, along with his works being included in private collections, including the National Museum of Wildlife Art in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and the Old Jail Art Center in Albany, Texas. Contact Joe today at 940-862-3023. Check him out on the internet at joebarrington.art. 
or swing by and check out some of his art collections found at the Magnolia Station in Albany, Texas. Serving the big country, Resource Care Community Health Center strives to be the leading health care resource in each community we serve. Our mission is to provide exceptional health care and outreach services to the communities we serve in the big country area through medical, dental, and behavioral health access for all. With locations at Albany, Clyde, Breckenridge, Merkel, Cross Plains, and our newest location opening in the spring of 2024 in Baird, we are committed to providing exceptional services to the big country. We accept almost all private insurances, as well as Medicaid, Medicare, and a sliding fee scale discount. All right, we're back here in top of the fifth inning. Alzebrook, number 15, the first baseman, is going to get the Indians started. First pitch from Chambers is going to be inside, ball one. I'm trying to see if I can get a pitch count for Chambers here. So we get this inning started. Chambers delivers. It's going to be a cross for a strike. It's going to take us to one and one. Chambers, again, has really done a good job of working ahead in the counts. And um, what we show right now, I think that was his 62nd, maybe 60, maybe 63 pitches total thus far through four. Swing and a miss right there, one and two. So Chambers doing a good job of keeping that count down, working late in this game. As the Lions lead three to one here in the top of the fifth. One and two count, pitch from Chambers. And it's gonna be, I think they're gonna call that maybe outside, could have been low, hard to tell from up here, but definitely a tough pitch to take. It's gonna take it to two and two. Pitch is gonna be in on him, he's gonna line one over, they're gonna call that foul. That ball was fair for quite a bit and then I think it just went foul just about a foot in front of the first base. Wagner was able to pick that up, step on first, but it's still two and two, and we'll do it again. Pitch, swing and a miss. That ball gets away from Oliver. Oliver's going to throw over to Wagner, and that's going to be a strikeout here to get us started here in the fifth. Seven strikeouts thus far for Chambers. And that's going to bring back the top of the lineup for the Indians. That's going to be Brindle, the shortstop. He's 0 for 2 on the afternoon. First pitch swinging, 0 and 1. Pitch from Chambers. Swinging, fouled back, 0-2. Again, a very nice crowd out here this afternoon on hand for senior day for these lines. Several seniors playing their final home game. Chambers ahead, 0-2, one out, and there's the pitch. Swing and a miss. And another strikeout up on the board for Chambers. His eighth of the afternoon, and that's going to bring up the center fielder, De La Cruz, for the Indians. Two outs here in the top of the fifth. That one's going to be high, ball one. Again, Lions leading three to one, all runs coming in the third inning. Haskell was able to get their single run in the first. Swing and a miss, one and one. Chambers has given up one hit through four and two thirds. Pitch here, one and one. That's going to be fouled back. It's going to be one and two. There's your pitch. And that's going to be a third called, uh, called strike. And Chambers is going to strike the side out right there. So Lions leading 3-1 to one as we're going to go to the bottom of the fifth. You're listening to, to Albany Line Baseball. Where a handshake is our word, cattle are money, and timing is everything. 
Western Livestock is a family-owned and operated livestock auction and order buying company with more than 30 years of experience. You trust us with your livelihood each week. The buying power in our seats ensures top dollar for your livestock to allow you to keep doing what you love. With sale barns in Oklahoma City, Comanche, and Woodward, Oklahoma, and Knoxville, Iowa, we're large enough to serve you, but small enough to know you. To learn more, call Ben Hale at 940-631-2333 or visit westerncommissioncompany.com. We're the bank you've always known and trusted, a part of your community for generations. And now, First National Bank of Albany Breckenridge is Clear Fork Bank. We're still privately owned and independent. You'll find the same dedicated team, the same friendly faces, and the same strong relationships with our customers. Our offerings have expanded to better serve you, but our commitment to local banking is steadfast. Clear Fork Bank, serving Texans since 1883. All right, we're back here in the bottom of the fifth. West still on the mound for the Indians. He's had three strikeouts on the afternoon. He's walked three, given up three hits, and given up three runs. So West back on the pitch here in the fifth. And it's going to walking in is going to be the third baseman Tyler Chapman to lead off the lines. In lines leading three to one here in the bottom of the fifth. Chapman is 0 for two on the afternoon. He's flat out the right end center field. First pitch is going to be outside ball one. Chapman batting in the two hole this afternoon. 1 0 pitch, swing and a miss, 1 and 1. West, similar to Chambers, has not thrown many pitches on the afternoon. That pitch, tra uh, pitch tracker's only got him right out 58 pitches right now. That one's going to be high. Ball two, two and one to count. Both pitchers doing a good job of keeping their pitch count down as both are starting to work deep into this game. Two and one. Here's the pitch. Swung on a miss. Two and two. Chapman looking for his first hit of the afternoon. Chapman leaning off here for the lines in the bottom of the fifth. That ball is going to be outside. It's going to hit the count three and two. Full count for Chapman. West delivers. Chapman's going to swing. He's going to hit that to left field. That ball could carry a long ways. It's going to be one bounce off the wall. And Chapman's going to continue to run. He's going to round second. He's headed to third. So Chapman's going to get it started here. His first hit of the afternoon. One bounce off that left field wall. Great hustle right there by Chapman to get it started here in the bottom of the fifth. So Chapman on third, that's going to bring in the second baseman. Reed singled back in the first. And he reached by air in the third. He had later come on to score. And that pitch is going to be high, ball one. One and no count. Called strike, one and one. Reed steps in, one on one count. Chapman getting his lead off third. There's your pitch, swung on a miss, one and two. 
So no outs here in the bottom of the fifth. Chapman over there at third with the leadoff triple. He digs in. He's going to find a hole right there between the third bases and the shortstop. Good piece of hitting right there by Cole Reed. That's going to drive in a run. And Reed's going to have his second single of the afternoon. And his first run batted in today. today. And that's going to bring up first baseman Zane Wagner. Wagner had a double back in the third, drove across two runs, and then later came on to score. Wagner's one for one with a walk. First pitch, he's swinging, fouled back. On one. Again, no outs here in the bottom of the fifth. Reed gets his lead off first. Throw back over. Reed back in safe. Looked like he was trying to get an extra step right there. West threw over to try to keep him close. So Reed's got his attention right now. As Wagner seen a lot of off-speed pitches this afternoon. That's going to be a ball outside. So one on one is count, no outs. Reed over at first. He gets his lead. Throw back over. Reed's back in safe. Yeah, one on one count to Wagner. Reed leads off first. Breaking ball, that's going to be high. Another off-speed pitch to Wagner. It's going to take the count to two and one. Two and one count. That's going to be in the dirt and outside. Reed's going to go to second on the pass ball. Give me a three and one count here to Wagner. So Wagner's seen Several off-speed pitches and a lot of pitches off the plate. Thus far, three and one count, read over at second. Here's your pitch, and that's going to be high. Another off-speed pitch. And Wagner's going to have his second walk of the afternoon. Two walks and a, a double for Wagner. And it looks like we're going to have a timeout here. I don't know that his pitch count's too high, but it looks like we could possibly have a pitching change coming up right here for the end ends. As they meet up on the mound, so. All right, so we're back here. They're going to stay with West right now. Uh, runners on first and second with no outs here in the bottom of the fifth. Lions leading four to one. Callum Fairchild is going to step in. Fairchild 0 for two on the afternoon. Reed gets his leads off second. Widener over first. Here's your pitch. Fairchild's going to send that one to center field. Takes a couple steps to his right. He's going to catch that one. Reed's going to tag for a second, but he's going to go back to second. Where that ball was hit was going to be tough for him to move over to third as that ball was hit to the right side of the center fielder. And he moves over a couple steps, throws it back in, and everybody stays put. Your starting catcher, 
So that's going to bring up Brody Oliver. Oliver, one for two on the afternoon. He does have an RBI. Found a nice hole earlier when they were trying to hold Wagner on at second. A big hole between first and second. He was able to put it there between there. It's going to be 0 1. First pitch strike to Oliver. Again, Oliver one for one with a single, or one for two with a single this afternoon with one run batted in. On one pitch, going to be in the dirt. Good pick right there by the catcher. Keep it in front of him. One on one count. So one on one to Oliver, one out. Runners on first and second. Here's the pitch. Oliver's going to send that one back behind us. Going to take the count to one and two. Again, lines leading four to one. Pushed three, ac three across in the third. Got one here in the fifth. That pitch is going to be outside. To take us to two and two. One run here in the bottom of the fifth so thus far. Two guys on. One out. Two and two count to Oliver. Pitch, that's going to be high and outside. Full count. So the runners won't necessarily be moving right here because there's only one out. Runners on first and second. Full count to Oliver. Reed gets a lead. Wagner off first. There's a pitch, swing and a miss. And that's going to be the fourth strikeout of the afternoon for West. And that's going to bring up the pitcher, Chip Chambers. Chambers 0 for 2 on the afternoon. West trying to battle back and get out of this inning with only one run. Chambers steps in. First pitch is going to be inside, ball one. One zero count here to Chambers. Two outs, two on. There's your pitch over the top of the third baseman. I think that ball's going to get down. It is. And it's going to get past the left fielder. Reed's going to score. Wagner around at third. He's going to score. And Chip's going to be in there at second base with a stand-up double. And that's going to push two runs across right there. So Wagner, uh, Chambers with a great piece of hitting went the opposite field direction right there. And Reed and Wagner both score from first and second. Peterson. Chambers standing on second. Peterson 0 for 1 on the afternoon with a walk. First pitch is going to be a ball. Lines leading 6 to 1 here in the bottom of the fifth. Pitch to Peterson's going to be high. Ball two. So far, three hits and a walk here in this inning for the Lions. Chapman led us off with, with a triple. Reed followed with a single. Wagner with a walk. And Chambers with two outs, doubles. And that just nearly got Woods. Going to take it to 3-0. and oh. 3-0 and oh count here to Peterson. Two outs. Chambers at second. And it's going to be a called strike on the outside corner, 3-1. and one. Three and 3-1 count here to Peterson. We're going to check back on Chambers at second right there. He's back in safely. That pitch is going to be outside. Peterson's going to have his second walk of the afternoon. That's going to bring up the right fielder, McCloy. 
McCloy 0 for 2 on the afternoon. So McCloy's going to step in with two outs here with runners on first and second. McCloy tried to bunt his way on back in the fourth. There's a pitch from West, swing and a miss. Strike one. Get West up to 85 pitches, according to the pitch tracker. Had to work pretty hard in this inning. Second pitch is high. It's going to be one and one. So it comes into this inning with a relatively low pitch count for starting your fifth inning and around the 58 to 60 mark. And this has been the eighth batter of this inning. That pitch is going to be a called strike on the outside corner. Again, another pitch we saw. Quite a bit of last week against Anson, that outside corner. So one and two to the count to McCloy. Runners on first and second. Two outs. Pitch from West. McCloy is going to get it, a piece of it. Second base is going to range back, and he's going to make the catch. And that's going to end the inning right here. So the Lions are able to get... Three runs on three hits, two walks, two left on base. They lead six to one. We're headed to the sixth inning. You're listening to Albany Line Baseball. Located on Highway 283 South, Easy Feed and Supply is your hometown headquarters for complete animal nutrition. We carry lawn and garden, hunting and fishing supplies, along with wildlife and pet feed. Let us load you up in our drive through warehouse. Need something delivered? We can come to you with our blower buggy to fill your corn and protein feeders, along with delivery of sack feed and rounder square bales of hay. Not only does Easy Feed have all your farming and ranching supplies, it's now the proud home of Parsons Beef, where you can get your prime Wagyu and Angus beef straight from our Texas ranches. Easy Feed and Supply, proudly serving Albany since 2011. Whether it's sculptures, metal fences, metal art, or entry gates, Joe Barrington has you covered. His images are drawn from a lifetime of living in rural Texas. With projects located in areas such as the Rawls College of Business Administration at Texas Tech, the Rio Grande Zoo in Albuquerque, New Mexico, along with his works being included in private collections, including the National Museum of Wildlife Art in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and the Old Jail Art Center in Albany, Texas. Contact Joe today at 940-862-3023. Check him out on the internet at joebarrington.art or swing by and check out some of his art collections found at the Magnolia Station in Albany, Texas. We're back here in the top of the six. West is going to lead off with the Indians. Chambers just pitched five solid innings, nine strikeouts, three walks and one hit, one run. One run coming back in the first. First pitch is going to be on the outside. They're going to be a ball one. West coming in. He's one for one on the afternoon. Doubled back in the first. He was the runner that scored. Uh, he also had a walk back in the third. Second pitch. Swing and a miss, one and one. Pitch from Chambers, working on that outside corner. Be called ball two and one. So two and one to count here to West. Getting it started here in the top of the sixth inning. Lions leading six to one. Pitch from Chambers, still working that outside corner. And it's gonna be called ball three and one to count to West. Pitch is going to be high and outside. Wes is going to have his second walk of the afternoon. And it's very possible we'll have a courtesy runner. He's and we're going to have a mound visit here by Coach Fairchild. We'll be, we'll be back.
All right, we're back here. Coach Fairchild visiting with Chambers. And that's going to bring up the third baseman, Rowe. He's going to swing at the first pitch. He's going to hit it right between the second and shortstop. Alexander, the pinch runner, is going to take try to take third. Relay into Fairchild from Fairchild. And Chapman's going to – both umpires kind of look at each other, but he's going to be called safe. So a single on the first pitch by Rowe. And Alexander goes from first to third on a bang-bang play right there. That's pretty close. So, man, it slid under that tag. And that's going to bring up the catcher, Solano. He's 0 for 2 on the afternoon. So runners on the corner. No outs. First pitch, swinging. He's going to scout out in the center field. That's probably going to be deep enough to get the runner across. Fairchild's going to make the catch. They're going to cut that throw coming back in off. Going to go ahead and concede that run. So Solano gets a sacrifice fly right there. Rowe stays at first base. And that's going to bring up the left fielder, Shaganall. He's 0 for 2 on the afternoon. So batting from the left side. Rowe over at first, first pitch. Swing and foul back. No one won the count. So after a, a walk by West, the next three batters have swung at the first pitch. A single, a sacrifice fly, and now a foul. 0-1 oh the count for Saginaw. Oh 0-1 delivery. It's going to pop that one up. I think Chapman's going to be in foul play, but Chapman's going to have enough room. He's going to make the catch. Two outs here in the top of the sixth. That's going to bring up the second baseman, Enriquez. Enriquez has got two walks on the afternoon and two at-bats. Chambers again only showing 82 pitches on our pitch tracker, 83 after that last foul ball. First pitch is going to be low, and it's going to be ball one. It's Enriquez. That pitch is going to be in there, one on one. Again, roll over at first. Two outs here in the top of the sixth. That ball, oh, that's going to be a little bit of high and outside, and it's going to make take the count to two and one on Enriquez. Two and one, two outs. It's going to be fouled off towards the face, first baseline. It's going to take the count to two and two. So we got two outs here in the top of the six lines, leading six to two. Two and two count. And Riquez is the batter. Pitch swung on. That's hit down the third base line, but that's going to drift over the fence and out of play. Wood's trying to make a play on that ball, but that ball, with the way the wind's blowing, it's just carried it over the fence. We'll come back and do it again. So two outs, two and two count. There's your pitch, swing and a miss. And that's gonna be the 10th strikeout on the afternoon for Chambers as the Indians have one hit, one run, one left on base. Lions lead 6-2 to as we go to the bottom of the sixth. You're listening to Albany Line Baseball. Whether it's sculptures, metal fences, metal art, or entry gates, Joe Barrington has you covered. His images are drawn from a lifetime of living in rural Texas. With projects located in areas such as the Rawls College of Business Administration at Texas Tech, the Rio Grande Zoo in Albuquerque, New Mexico, along with his works being included in private collections, including the National Museum of Wildlife Art in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and the Old Jail Art Center in Albany, Texas. Contact Joe today at 940-862-3023. Check him out on the internet at joebarrington.art or swing by and check out some of his art collections 
found at the Magnolia Station in Albany, Texas. Serving the big country, Resource Care Community Health Center strives to be the leading health care resource in each community we serve. Our mission is to provide exceptional health care and outreach services to the communities we serve in the big country area through medical, dental, and behavioral health access for all. With locations at Albany, Clyde, Breckenridge, Merkel, Cross Plains, and our newest location opening in the spring of 2024 in Baird, we are committed to providing exceptional services to the big country. We accept almost all private insurances, as well as Medicaid, Medicare, and a sliding fee scale discount. All right, we're back here in the bottom of the six, so we're gonna have a new pitcher for the Indians. It's number seven. Pinkerton's come in to pitch for the Indians. West wrapping up his afternoon. He had four strikeouts, five walks, six hit, and six runs. And that's gonna be up to the top of the order for the Lions. They're gonna lead off with shortstop Casey Fairchild. Fairchild 0 for two with a walk on the afternoon. He scored in the third. First pitch swinging. Fairchild's going to send it to center field. Center fielder's going to range back. And it's going to be a fly out to the center fielder. One away here early in the top of the sixth. Have a little bit of movement by the Indians. First baseman is now going to be West. The second baseman is going to be Osbrook. Um, I think Rowe and Brindle stayed put. I think Dela Cruz stayed put in center field. Not sure about the right and left fielders to see if anybody else moved around with the changes. Chapman digs in. Triple back in the fifth and later scored. He's one for three on the afternoon. First pitch called strike. One out of one pitch. Chapman's going to drive that one to left field. That, that ball is foul or fair? We got one send, not real sure. I think the home plate umpire called that one foul. So Chapman's going to come back. That's just going to that's going to be a long strike. A long foul ball right there by Chapman. Looked like it might have been just about half a foot outside that line. And we'll come back 0-2 count to Chapman. Very similar to the one he drove back in the top of the, or the bottom of the fifth. It ended up as a triple. And that ball's gonna be high and outside, one and two. Again, Chapman, one for three on the afternoon, playing third base for the Lions today. That's going to be swung on and missed. Strike three. Two outs here in the bottom of the sixth. It's going to bring up the second baseman, Cole Reed. Cole's got two singles on the afternoon. He also reached by the air. And later scored. He scored twice for the Lions. He's also got one RBI. That first pitch is going to be high. Ball one. So Reed got away the third and the first. Scored in the third. Scored in the fifth. Also drove a run in in the fifth. 
That pitch is going to be well outside. Ball two to another count. Two no pitch to behind outside three no. That was a 100% take sound right there for Reed. Three and one. So three and one count here for Reed. Two outs here in the bottom of the sixth. Lions leading six to two. Pitch is going to be outside. Reed's going to draw his first walk of the afternoon. He's headed to first base, and that's going to bring in the first baseman, Wagner. Wagner's had two walks and a double on the afternoon. He's also scored twice, and he's knocked in two runs as well. So two walks, a double, two runs scored, two runs batted in. Reed gets a lead, and that ball's going to hit Zane in the head. So his third walk of the afternoon, as we talked earlier, Zane sees a lot of off-speed pitches. I think that's probably what that was supposed to be, and um, hit Zane in the head, and he'll walk over to first base. Reed will walk over to second. So runners at first and second here in the bottom of the sixth with two outs. That's going to bring up Callum Fairchild. Fairchild's 0 for 3 on the afternoon. Struck out back in the first, and he's flown to left and flown to center. So Fairchild digs in with two outs, two, two on. Here in the bottom of the sixth inning. That pitch is going to be outside. Reed and Wagner are going to both be able to move up. So Reed goes over to third, Wagner to second. 1-0 count to Fairchild. One and no hit pitch here to Fairchild. And that's going to be outside. Ball two. Again, the Lions celebrating Senior Day today. Looks like they're going to have some sort of a meal afterwards. That ball's going to be high and inside. Three and oh. So for some of those fans and players sticking around. Three and count here to Fairchild. Two outs, runners on second and third. Here's the pitch, and that's going to be outside. And that's going to load the bases for Oliver. And looks like we have a, pit, a quick mound visit here by the, by the coach. We'll take a quick break. Be right back. All right, so we're back here after a quick visit to the mound. Pinkerton, Pinkerton had a quick start to this inning. Got a fly out the center field and a strikeout, but has followed that up with three walks. Oliver digs in. First pitch is going to be a ball outside. So 
So ball one here at Oliver. Two outs. Bases are loaded. That one's going to come across one and one. So Fairchild, Wagner, and Reed all reach via the walk. They stand on first, second, and third, all getting their leads here. With Oliver one and one. That pitch is going to be outside, and Reed's going to stay put. That was a wild pitch right there, but a pretty quick bounce back to the catcher. So Reed's going to stay put at third base. Again, Oliver one for three on the afternoon. He's got a run batted in back in the third. That ball's going to be fouled back, two and two to the count. Oliver got a single back in the third with two outs. He's able to plate Wagner. It's two and two count, two outs. There's a the pitch that's going to be inside and high. So we got a full count here with two outs. All the bases occupied. Runner should be moving. There's your pitch to Oliver. Oliver's going to swing. He's going to hit that one up. Mace, it's going to be foul. First baseman's going to make the catch, and that's going to end this inning. So the lines, three walks, no hits, no runs, three left on base. We're headed to the top of the seventh. Lines lead 6-2. to two. You're listening to Albany Line Baseball. We're the bank you've always known and trusted, a part of your community for generations. And now, First National Bank of Albany Breckenridge is Clear Fork Bank. We're still privately owned and independent. You'll find the same dedicated team, the same friendly faces, and the same strong relationships with our customers. Our offerings have expanded to better serve you, but our commitment to local banking is steadfast. Clear Fork Bank, serving Texans since 1883. Located on Highway 283 South, Easy Feed and Supply is your hometown headquarters for complete animal nutrition. We carry lawn and garden, hunting and fishing supplies, along with wildlife and pet feed. Let us load you up in our drive through warehouse. Need something delivered? We can come to you with our blower buggy to fill your corn and protein feeders, along with delivery of sacked feed and round or square bales of hay. Not only does Easy Feed have all your farming and ranching supplies, it's now the proud home of Parsons Beef where you can get your prime Wagyu and Angus beef straight from our Texas ranches. Easy Feed and Supply, proudly serving Albany since 2011. All right, we're back here in the top of the seventh. Chambers back on the mound. Uh, Real quickly, just quick shout out, quick thanks to Donald McCullough out there in right field. He's our cameraman this afternoon. Uh, Colt Camel running the show again, once again, doing a great job. Thank you, Mr. Howard, getting us set up today as I was rolling in pretty hot coming in from golf. So uh, thank all these guys for getting everything set up. And as we go to the top of the seventh inning right here, Chambers, 10 strikeouts on the afternoon, four walks and two hits. Two runs. And we got the eight hole wing, the DH. It's going to lead off the seventh for the Indians. First pitch is going to be hit to twin right and center, and that's going to fall in for a base hit. So, first pitch swinging, and he's going to have a single. Third hit of the afternoon for the Indians. That's going to bring up Ozabrook. I think he moved over to second base in that last inning. He's over two on the afternoon. First pitch, he's swinging. He's going to hit this one down the left field line. Woods is, he's got enough room. He's going to make the catch. So a long out right there. And that's going to bring up the shortstop, Brindle. One out here, one on, here in the top of the seventh. Again, if you're just with us, Chambers having a great uh, day on the mound. He's got 10 strikeouts, four walks, three hits, two runs. Looking to go to the distance right here. 
First pitch to Brindle is going to be a strike on the outside corner. The 0 and 1. Pitch from Chambers. It's going to be in the dirt. It's going to get away from Oliver. Wing's going to move over to second base. He's going to take it to 1 and 1. Let's see if I can get a pitch count. On Chip, right quick. Chip's had a done a good job of attacking the zone. That pitch is going to get away. Wing's going to move over to third. So Chip, right now, it looks like he's about 93 or 94 pitches, depending on that last pitch. I think he's at 94. So got a little bit of room right here to try to finish close this one out. Wing over at third. Single to start this inning off. Brindle in two and one to count. That pitch is hit over to the shortstop. They're going to let this run get across. Fairchild over to the first. Over to Wagner. Two outs. So that's going to bring up Delacruz. He's over three on the afternoon. And Fairchild's going to come out to the mound. Probably going to discuss the strategy here and see how, how many pitches we may have left for Chambers. I think he's probably going to try and take him the distance right here. He's still got a little bit of room. I think that was his 95th pitch. So, um, No runners on base right now. So, Two outs here in the top of the seventh. Score six to three. A fair child walks back over to the dugout. Chambers stays on the mound. And that's going to bring up the Center fielder, De La Cruz. Again, he's 0 for 3 on the afternoon. First pitch, swinging 0 and 1. So lefty to lefty here in the top of the seventh. Second pitch, swinging 0 and 2. Chambers coming in after him right here. Maybe that was the message at the mound. Let's come after him and just throw heaters. And If he gets a hold of it, let your defense help you out. Third pitch. And that's going to be a called strike. The Chambers is going to end this one. He's going to tally up his 11th strikeout of the afternoon. He goes seven innings for four walks, three hits, and three runs in the lines. Are going to win this one 6-3 to three as they win their final home game of the district season. Uh, we'll be back after this message to wrap it up. Serving the big country, Resource Care Community Health Center strives to be the leading health care resource in each community we serve. Our mission is to provide exceptional health care and outreach services to the communities we serve in the big country area through medical, dental, and behavioral health access for all. With locations at Albany, Clyde, Breckenridge, Merkel, Cross Plains, and our newest location opening in the spring of 2024 in Baird, we are committed to providing exceptional services to the big country. We accept almost all private insurances, as well as Medicaid, Medicare, and a sliding fee scale discount. All right, we're back here again. Um, the Lions closing out their district home schedule, home slate, senior day. Chip Chambers going the distance here, seven innings this afternoon. He had 11 strikeouts, walked four batters, gave up three hits and three runs. So a great outing for Chip Chambers as the Lions close out with a victory, uh, six to three. Kind of looking ahead of the rest of this week. So uh, just to kind of keep you up to date, uh, softball closed out their home, home district schedule last night. Uh, Thursday, the track and field team will head to Springtown as they compete on Friday and Saturday at Springtown at the regional meet. Um, got several field events starting that morning in the 9 a.m. time slot. And then the running prelims will start at 2 o'clock. And then we'll be back on Saturday again with some prelims at, or uh, some field events at 9. And then the running finals will start at 2 o'clock. Um, everything working out perfectly. We are planning on broadcasting. So if you have some time, join us on Friday and Saturday as we broadcast the Region 2 2A track meet. Friday and Saturday live from Springtown. So, um, Look forward to that. Baseball and softball are all off the rest of this week. And they'll be back in action next week. They'll both hit the road um, as both of them are closing in on the 
final stretch of their district season. So uh, as the playoff information comes up, we'll get you that information as soon as we know that. A couple of games, still a lot of deciding factors on both ends. I think Coach Fer uh, Fuentes had told me they still had to wait on some results this afternoon to find out who they would be playing in this first round of softball. So we'll get you those as soon as possible. I appreciate y'all joining us this afternoon. Um, appreciate all the help. Colt Camel again, Donald McCole, Matthew Howard. And we'll be back with you on Friday and Saturday from Springtown. This has been a presentation of Albion Line Baseball.